Picture this, a world painted in the glamorous hues of the 1950s, where technicolor dreams and sparkling charisma collide on the silver screen. It's a time when movies transported us to a realm of fantasy, and one such gem from that era was the 1953 classic, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Ah, the memories it holds, the thrill of that first encounter, the characters that danced their way into our hearts, and the moments that left us dazzled. Perhaps it was the enchanting allure of Marilyn Monroe as Lorelei Lee, her iconic blonde locks capturing the spotlight as she sang Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend with an elegance that lingered long after the curtains fell. Or maybe it was Jane Russell, the embodiment of sultry sophistication, whose on-screen chemistry with Monroe was an artful symphony of contrasts. Do you recall the chuckles and gasps that punctuated the theater as the duo embarked on their transatlantic escapade, searching for love and excitement aboard luxurious cruise ships? The comedic misadventures and the lighthearted banter that unfolded like pages of a well-worn novel, drawing us into their mischievous world. And so, as we journey back to that era of glamour and charm, let's uncover some lesser-known tales about the making of gentlemen prefer blondes. These random tidbits paint a behind-the-scenes canvas that adds depth to our admiration for the film. Did you know that the famous Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend gown was actually made of satin and not diamonds? It's the magic of movie making, where illusion seamlessly merges with reality. So, fasten your seatbelt for a trip down memory lane as we explore these delightful nuggets of trivia. From unexpected casting choices to the intricacies of set design, each piece of the puzzle reveals more about the heart and soul poured into this cinematic masterpiece. And now, as the curtains rise on these intriguing facts, let's embark on a journey that blends nostalgia with curiosity. After all, in the realm of classic cinema, there's always more than meets the eye. Get ready to be amazed, entertained, and transported back to a time of elegance and exuberance. It's an exuberance. It's an ex Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, a 1953 film directed by Howard Hawks, emerges as a classic musical comedy that exudes glamour, wit, and timeless charm. Originating from Anita Liu's 1925 novel and its subsequent Broadway adaptation, the movie follows the escapades of two vivacious showgirls, Lorelei Lee and Dorothy Shaw, played by Marilyn Monroe and Jane Russell, respectively. Set against a backdrop of wealth and romance, the story unfolds as the duo embarks on a transatlantic journey filled with misadventures and mischievousness. Monroe's portrayal of the naive yet cunning Lorelei, whose unapologetic pursuit of diamonds and romance propels the narrative, has become iconic. Russell's Dorothy provides a contrasting and witty counterpart, showcasing their undeniable chemistry. The film's unique style emerges from its blend of lavish musical numbers, dazzling costumes, and witty repartee. The musical score includes Monroe's iconic rendition of Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, which remains an enduring cultural reference. The film's exploration of materialism, romance, and societal expectations is laced with humor and satire, making it more than just a superficial comedy. Its impact on popular culture is indelible, with Monroe's pink dress and the song Diamonds Are a Girl's Girl's best friend becoming synonymous with glamour and luxury. Gentlemen Prefer Blondes has left an imprint on the cinematic landscape, influencing subsequent comedies and musicals. It continues to be celebrated for its humor, performances, and commentary on societal values. In conclusion, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes is a cinematic gem that immortalizes Monroe and Russell's charisma while offering a captivating blend of entertainment and social critique. Its origins in literature and theater, iconic characters, unique style, and lasting impact all contribute to its status as a beloved classic, standing the test of time. The test of time. The test of time. Marilyn Monroe famously declared, Well, whatever I am, I am the blonde, when informed she was the star of the 1953 film Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Despite not being the sole focus, her vibrant portrayal of Lorelei Lee stole the spotlight. In her final interview a decade later, Monroe recounted the disparity in pay between her and co-star Jane Russell, who portrayed the brunette Dorothy Shaw. She got $200,000 for it, and I got my $500 a week, Monroe mused. Yet, amidst the inequity, she lauded Russell's camaraderie, stating, She, by the way, was quite wonderful to me. Fueling tabloids' attempts to concoct a feud between them, Monroe and Russell's genuine friendship defied sensationalism. Russell attributed their instant bond to both being Geminis. Remarkably, Russell, married to athlete Robert Waterfield, and Monroe, then with Joe DiMaggio, found common ground in discussing their relationships. As their Zodiac connection cemented their rapport, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes turned out to be a showcase of true camaraderie, countering the fabricated drama and showcasing Monroe and Russell's compatibility both on and off the screen. So, while gossip columns vied to pit the two against each other, the authentic friendship shared by these stars shone as bright as the spotlight itself. Spotlight itself. Marilyn Monroe's glamour shines in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, a golden connection in the glitzy world of Hollywood's golden age. Marilyn Monroe's star power dazzled in the 1953 film Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. Beyond the captivating performances and catchy tunes, one striking detail adorned the silver screen, Monroe's gold lame evening dress. Notably, this glamorous attire had a notable history before gracing Monroe's iconic figure. The shimmering gold dress, a symbol of Monroe's allure, had previously been worn by Ginger Rogers in the 1952 film Dreamboat. 
This seamless transition of the dress from one Hollywood luminary to another is a testament to the interconnectedness of Tinseltown's glamour. Monroe breathed new life into the outfit, wearing it with her own distinct elegance and captivating the audience. But the glimmer of history didn't stop at the dress. Another intriguing element adorning the film was the ship model prominently displayed. This intricate model, utilized in the film's ocean liner scenes, was actually the same model that graced the screen in the 1953 film Titanic. Ingeniously refurbished to resemble the SS Isle de France, the ship takes on a character of its own, even being explicitly named in the film. Intriguingly, remnants of the past intertwined further as some ocean liner sets used in Gentlemen Prefer Blondes had a previous life in the 1953 film Titanic. This cinematic overlap not only underscores the resourcefulness of Hollywood's production teams but also adds an air of mystique to the oceanic scenes, as if the very history of the seas was captured within the celluloid frames. The legacy of gentlemen prefer blondes endures, carried by Monroe's star power, the shimmer of the gold lame dress, and the cinematic history woven into its very scenes. As the golden age of Hollywood continues to captivate cinephiles, these connections remain a testament to the magic of the silver screen. Of the silver screen. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, the iconic musical number from the 1953 film Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, took on a new dimension when it was reshot in CinemaScope. This updated version was utilized as a key component of a CinemaScope demonstration at the Fox lot in March of 1953. Notably, the switch to CinemaScope streamlined the production process, with a mere three minutes one divided by two hours devoted to filming the sequence, a stark contrast to the initial four days spent on the original rendition. Producer Daryl F. Zanuck proudly disclosed to Daily Variety the remarkable time reduction brought about by CinemaScope. However, the public only witnessed this enhanced version a decade later, as it concluded Fox homage to Marilyn Monroe in the documentary Marilyn. The transformation of this beloved number reflects both the evolution of cinematic technology and its lasting impact on a treasured classic. When Verdon's mastery shines in coaching for gentlemen prefer blondes in the glitz and glamour of the 1953 film Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, a subtle yet captivating touch of choreographic genius can be attributed to the legendary Gwen Verdon. Renowned for her dance prowess and artistic guidance, Verdon's influence on the movie's stars, Jane Russell and Marilyn Monroe, is a testament to her talent. Verdon took on the task of coaching both Russell and Monroe, tailoring her approach to enhance their distinctive styles. A whispered tidbit from behind the scenes suggests that Verdon even lent her own vocals for a particular moment, dubbing the mesmerizing sway of both Monroe's and Russell's derrieres. This seemingly whimsical detail adds a layer of intrigue to the film's production and showcases Verdon's versatile involvement. However, the role of Verdon extends beyond the realm of dance. During a pivotal story conference with the film's director Howard Hawks and studio head Daryl F. Zanuck, a momentous idea was floated, a subtle transformation of Marilyn Monroe's screen persona. Hawks advocated for a departure from the stereotypical blonde bombshell, aiming to mold Monroe into a more diverse actress. This artistic evolution not only redefined Monroe's career but also cemented her as a monumental film star in the 1950s and beyond. Verdon's craftsmanship, a catalyst in Monroe's trajectory, illustrates the depth of influence that artistic mentors can wield. As the credits rolled on Gentlemen Prefer Blondes, Verdon's choreography and guidance shimmered as a quiet yet potent force, enhancing the film's allure and leaving an indelible mark on Hollywood history. Hollywood history. Hollywood history. Choreographer Jack Cole's meticulous attention to detail in the 1953 film adaptation of Gentlemen Prefer Blondes brought a unique visual flair to the iconic production number, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend. While Marilyn Monroe dazzled as the blonde bombshell Lorelei Lee, Cole's vision ensured that she remained the sole blonde amidst a sea of brunettes and redheads. To maintain this contrast, Cole ingeniously outfitted the showgirls with black knitting fastened discreetly to their flowered headdresses. As the women adorned the chandeliers alongside Monroe, this netting obscured their hair and created a striking visual illusion of uniform dark-haired elegance. Even the gentlemen flanking Monroe embraced gray temples, further emphasizing her radiant blonde allure. Cole's inventive solution not only retained the integrity of the production's aesthetic but also showcased his commitment to detail without resorting to drastic measures. The result was a visually stunning and harmonious ensemble, cementing the film's status as a timeless classic. The film's triumph extended beyond its visuals, owed in part to director Howard Hawke's masterful infusion of humor and Charles Lederer's sharp screenplay. Departing from the original stage script, Lederer tailored the dialogue and scenarios to the strengths of the film's stars, Jane Russell, Marilyn Monroe, and Charles Coburn. An ingenious revision included transforming the character of Henry Spofford III, originally Dorothy's love interest on stage, into an eight-year-old boy portrayed by George Winslow. This creative shift added a delightful dimension to the narrative, resulting in memorable interactions and humorous exchanges. The synergy between Hawke's direction and Lederer's adaptation solidified gentlemen prefer blondes as a cinematic gem that continues to charm audiences to this day. In the annals of film history, gentlemen prefer blondes stands as a testament to the collaborative magic that can occur when talented minds converge with a shared vision.
Through Cole's innovative choreography and letterer's astute screenplay, the film seamlessly melded humor, charm, and wit, captivating viewers and earning its place as an enduring masterpiece. As the curtains draw to a close on this cinematic journey, I invite you to take a moment and bask in the radiant glow of gentlemen prefer blondes. Just like the sparkling diamonds that adorn the screen, this 1953 masterpiece has woven itself into the fabric of our cultural tapestry, leaving a trail of glamour, laughter, and allure. Whether you found yourself mesmerized by Marilyn Monroe's iconic rendition of Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, tapping your toes to the vivacious melodies, or being swept away by the hilarious escapades of Lorelei and Dorothy, this film has a unique place in all our hearts. It's more than just a movie, it's a reflection of our dreams, desires, and the timeless pursuit of happiness. Perhaps you've had your own Marilyn Monroe moment, embracing the world with confidence and a dash of humor. Or maybe you've discovered a bond with Jane Russell's character, appreciating the loyalty and warmth that underlies the glitz and glamour. No matter the connection, gentlemen prefer blondes as a treasure trove of memories waiting to be unlocked. So, I encourage you to share your thoughts, your laughter, and your cherished memories. What does this film mean to you? How has it touched your life, and what resonates with you on this golden journey? Your stories enrich the legacy of gentlemen prefer blondes, ensuring that its magic continues to radiate through generations to come. Thank you for indulging in this whimsical reverie, for allowing the allure of 1953 to dance in your heart once more. Your time and curiosity are greatly appreciated as we weave together the threads of our collective cinematic experience. Until our narratives intertwine again, keep the glint of those diamonds close to your heart. With cinematic affection, 